we're starting a new series looking at the Sega arcade game Dottori Kun. We'll be looking at what it is, why it is and how the game works by taking a deep dive into the hardware on this simple board. Hopefully you've seen some of my previous series of FPJ core development for the Tank Battalion game. That board used the popular for the time MOS 6502 chip. In that series we learn all about that chip and how it works. I want to do a mini-series on the Zilog Z80 chip and so I think this Sega game is simple enough and ideal to get quite familiar with how the other major 8-bit chip, the Zilog Z80, functions. So what is Dottori Kun? Well, take yourself back to 80s Japan. You are the familiar company Sega and you want to sell generic sit-down arcade cabinets, the so-called candy cab. The Candy Cab is ideal for arcade operators that want to get a bunch of these units and put their own games in there, choosing the most popular games of the day. In that way they can maximise their profits by giving the arcade public the best experience that they could want in that current time. Maybe you just want to put Street Fighter 2 in all the cabs. So Sega produce a cab such as the Astro City, but due to a couple of reasons they can't just sell the cab on its own. First, you need a way to show that the cab works, so you need some basic functionality of the screen, a little colour, and a way to check all the inputs and coin mechs. Secondly, there seems to be a curious law in Japan, Japan's Electrical Appliance and Material Control Law, which requires you to demonstrate functionality of an appliance. In effect, you can't just sell an arcade cabinet to the public if it doesn't actually work as an arcade cab. Anyway, all this combined created the need for an incredibly simple little game. Sega chose to do a cut down version of the game Head On, produced by Gremlin, and also I think there was a version by Exidy called Crash. All very similar games, if not the exact same game. So you can see the game playing here. Essentially we've got a maze with dots, and you're the arrow and you're trying to collect all the dots and then the cross is the enemy trying to catch you and uh, depending on the level you've got either one person chasing you or multiple and then the speed is either slow or fast again depending on the level um, basic controls are just to go up down left and right to get all the dots you do have a speed up button as one of the buttons on the joypad Here we've got the actual board plugged in. Um, this is plugged in through the super gun, which I went through on a previous episode. Uh, on this particular version, um, it doesn't seem to have some of the features that the uh, Mr. Core has. Um, my board doesn't have the test feature um, to run through the uh, VRAM. And also I can't access any of the uh, CRT tests or input tests, which we'll see in a minute. I'm not saying that not on there, but um, can't really seem to get into those menu items if they are there. Going over to the Mr. version, um, we can see exactly the same, uh, very vibrant colors again um, because of the, probably my super gun um, on the other one. Um, exactly the same game. Uh, having to collect all the dots, uh, well, there is a possibility on the Mr. version to change out the ROM and you can actually play a kind of Pac-Man game, uh, very similar in some of the graphics. In addition there is a test uh, screen which you can go into which uh, allows you to um, test the inputs um, of your stick and some of the buttons. Um, you can also have a CRT test screen which shows just some of the colors which maybe uh, you could change your um, uh, CRT gun ratios on if you wanted to. Probably a bit too simple I think really. Uh, just demonstrating that it is color more than anything. And then there was a VRAM test uh, which does the same as uh, what happens at the beginning of the game anyway. So that's the game explained, um, let's go and look at the actual board. So let's take a quick look at the board, you can see it's pretty simple. It's pretty small, probably the smallest arcade board that isn't just a system on chip type, although there are a few of these types of boards around, not just this game. 
we've got up here, we've got our jammer connector. Uh, I've got it plugged straight into a super gun, uh, the one that I covered on the previous episode. So for the components, first down here, we've got the uh, master oscillator part, a four megahertz oscillator. We've seen before how you can either have a piezo crystal with added circuitry, or you can go with an all-in one-pot oscillator. So on this board, they've got for that gone for that uh, one-pot oscillator. Then on this side here, we've got the uh, Zilog Z80 CPU. Uh, it's a 40-pin chip, and it's the whole brain of the board. Um, we'll get into how it's fully interacting with everything else. Uh, as the series goes on. Um, on the right hand side uh, we've got the Sega Mask ROM uh, with the serial MPR14479. A Mask ROM is a read-only memory that's permanently programmed on the chip and this is a bit different from an EEPROM that can be erased by UV or an electrically erasable ROM chip. Uh, on this board, I desoldered the Sega ROM and put it in a socket. Uh, so that allows me to switch it out with an EEPROM that I've programmed to play around with the hardware. And we'll be seeing in future episodes uh, what I've done there. Um, I pretty much just programmed a test program that uh, shows a specific image on the screen. So we'll be using the, uh, the VRAM. Um, and we'll also be using some input uh, routines as well. So we've got the ROM, uh, but we need the RAM. So right over here is the RAM that we're using. It's the LC3517BS15. Uh, uh, that is a two kilobyte, eight bit static RAM. And um, they're using it for both video RAM and CPU work RAM. So we'll have fun understanding how they're accessing it by both the CPU and the video circuitry. Uh, so we don't get any memory contention problems. Now we'll recognize up here the 74LS161 4-bit binary counters, those 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, they're using it for uh, timing and screen syncing as well as various other functionality of the game, uh, like loading in screen data from video RAM to display on the screen. The 74LS166, you may recall, is the parallel to serial shift register, which is often used to take in a byte of memory from the video memory and convert it to individual pixels on the screen. Uh, the rest of the chips, like the 74LS157s, uh, those are multiplexers, or the 244 buffers, or 245 um, bus transceivers, or there's plain old flip-flops and AND gates and NAND gates. So we'll be covering how those all interact in future episodes. Uh, we'll be looking at a few things. First, we have the actual board. So we'll be able to use the logic probe to measure certain parts to see if we can understand what's, what it's doing. I already mentioned I can change out the ROM. So I've written a simple program to test certain functions of the board. And we'll look at how the CPU operates with uh, certain machine code functions that I've written. Now, in order to not be too blind with how the circuit board is operating and how all the chips are connecting, we'll be leaning heavily on a website from a chap called Chris Covell. Uh, there's a link in the description to his site, and on there, there's a full schematic of the board, and we'll be able to break down the functions of each part uh, nice and quickly and easily. Now, on the other hand, of course, we are a Mr. Channel. So we want to have a look at how the Mr. Core works. So we will be breaking down the Mr. Files and how they're translating this board into Verilog. Um, here you can uh, get the files off the GitHub. If you look under uh, arcade.orikun, um, we've got our usual description of, of the game, how everything's packaged up. Um, got the top files here, and then if you go into RTL, that is where the system files are for the uh, for the core, main one being uh, this one here, .uri.v. Um, so this was mostly done by Furtec with uh, modifications by uh, Jimmy Stones. And as I said, information from this Cov Chris Covell uh, site. And I think he also built on some work uh, for, by a Japanese 
chap that uh, did some of the research as well. So in the way of keeping uh, this video series a bit shorter than previously, I'm going to end it there. Um, and then in the next one we'll get into the building blocks of this simple uh, board and how it all uh, fits together in terms of the RAM, ROM, CPU, um, input and output. So see you next time.